It's been awesome raising five kids. They're all different. They're all completely different. At the age of 10, when the movie came out, President Bush invited my son and I to the White House. He wanted to watch the movie and talk to us. After the movie, the President of the United States, the man who loves baseball, owned a Major League Baseball team, looks down at my 10-year-old son. He goes, Hunter, are you going to be a ball player like your daddy? And my son looks up at the President and said, no, sir, baseball sucks. <laughs> now, as a baseball player, I'm mortified. As a dad, I'm like, at least he said, sir. <laughs> he looked up at the president. He goes, I'm going to be a lawyer. At 10. 26 now, he's a lawyer. But he got to chase his dreams because he didn't have to do it the way I did it. If you've seen the movie, you know my dad and I didn't get along very well. That is actually Disney's G-rated version of our relationship. My dad had great things to say to me, things I carry with me today. When I get tired or I get run down, they come back and haunt me because it's not the bruises that stay, it's the words. And if you have people tear you down enough, that's where you want to stay. You're not smart enough, you're not good enough. Why do you even try? Why don't you quit now before you embarrass yourself and everybody else? You'll never make it. His favorite saying to me as a child is, children are to be seen and not heard, so as a child I never talked. My dad was in the military and moved constantly. The way I made friends was by showing up at a ball field with a glove throwing a ball, and then I had a team full of friends. I never had to say a word. I didn't talk. I was scared of my dad. Now at 53, I make a living talking. <laughs> so after every speech, I call him, and I say, guess how many people I talked to today? Because <laughs> he's old, and I'm big. <laughs> but we can live up to or down to expectations put upon us. Early in my life, everywhere except on a ball field, I live down here. I didn't care about grades. I just wanted to be on an athletic field because I knew there I could be the kid I was supposed to be. I could turn off those voices. You're not good enough because I knew I was. Not only was I good enough, I was better than everybody else, and I wanted to prove that. That was my way of communicating with the world. See, my kids never had to do that. I never hit my kids. I never cursed my kids. I never told them they were worthless. They would never amount to anything. And that's what happens every day in homes all across the world. That's what happens every day in offices all across the world. That's what happens every day when people who say they love each other turn on each other and say ugly, negative things and tear each other down. We serve on a lot of different teams. My grandfather taught me this, my big mentor, and I'm going to get to him in a minute. One of the biggest things he ever taught me was, you're not serving you. You serve part of this family. You serve your church. You serve the name. You serve whatever sports team you're with. But it's not about you. Not only is it not about you, it's never been about you. It's where you can plug yourself in and make yourself a part of something bigger than yourself. He's a wise man. He taught me a lot. For 15 years, I watched my parents say the worst things they could possibly say to each other, throw things, hit each other, blame everybody else for their problems. In the next three years... I learned from my grandparents, it doesn't have to be that way. For 15 years, I learned to blame everybody else for my problems. At the age of 15, my parents did me the biggest favor they never knew they did for me. They moved me from Miami, Florida to Brownwood, Texas, into my grandparents' house. Ironically, it was my father's parents I lived with. But for 15 years, I watched this arguing. In the next three years, I never heard my grandparents say a cross word to each other. They never said anything they could not take back. That was so strange to me. Now, they were old school, so there were days of silence. <laughs> but they never pushed that button where you couldn't take it back. For 15 years, I watched my, my parents take, take, take. In the next three years, I watched grandparents who were never rich but gave back all the time. My grandfather was six foot three, 260 pounds. He had a menswear store in Brownwood, Texas. Population, 20,000 people. My grandfather knew everybody in the world. People came up to him all the time for his opinion. Now, if you wanted the truth, you go to my grandfather. If you wanted it cookie-coated, that's the wrong person to go to, man. But he had a way of telling you the truth where you could walk out of his store with your head held high with eight different other options and directions in which to go. 
He wasn't there to tear down. He was there to build up. He fought in World War II. He lost his brother there. Came back. He started a store. He had a wife, a young family. He started a menswear store with a handshake from a banker. And the banker said, if it was anybody else, I would not do this, but I know you're good for your word. My grandparents are the two most honest people I've ever known in my life. I strive to be more like them every day I'm alive. Hopefully one day I will achieve that. But in the three years I lived with them, I watched my grandmother, who was five foot three, not six three, run our church for 30 years. She was our church secretary. Smartest woman I've ever seen in my life. She could do trig in her head. Apparently that skips a couple generations. <laughs> I had not received that gift. Fortunately, my kids did. But it's amazing when you watch a couple work who was working together for something bigger than themselves. My grandparents were full of faith. They did things for people that nobody ever knew about. Thanksgiving dinners for families who couldn't afford it. Christmas presents for families with kids that couldn't afford it. Out of their own bank account, they'd pay a bill for somebody so that they could keep their dream going on a little bit longer. Now, if you want a good picture to take home with you today, picture you at the age of 15 in a car behind the wheel watching your grandparents deliver presents to a family that doesn't have anything, stacking them up on, a, on their front porch, ringing the doorbell and running off. And you're the getaway driver. <laughs> when you watch your grandparents run, that's awesome. <laughs> but that's how they were. Amazing people. And she was either at church doing her job or she was at the store doing accounting for my grandfather. He, he was either doing his job or he was at church doing his deacon job, singing in the choir, helping her be her. They built each other up. They were part of something bigger than themselves. They are the mentors of my life. They're the ones who taught me that I can be anything I want to be. It's not going to come easy. Nobody's going to hand me anything. You've got to work. And I worked for my grandfather in the stores for three summers. And he taught me a lot. Every day, pretty much, I got a lesson. Jimmy, you're born with your name and you die with your name. What you do with it in between is a legacy you leave behind for everybody else. Who do you want to be? Jimmy, if you ever make a promise, you live up to that promise no matter what. Because at the end of the day, when you pass away, you're going to be remembered for one thing. Did you live by your word? Were you honest? Jimmy, it takes a lifetime to build good character. It takes one mistake to destroy everything you've ever worked for. Who are you? These lessons continued. On a Monday morning at 9.05 a.m., this lady walks into his store. All the other men that worked for my grandfather were about his age. They watched this lady walk in, and they went back to drinking their coffee, and they ignored her like she didn't exist. You see, this was an upscale menswear store, and she walked into the store with overalls, boots, and let's just say to smell the boots, she had a pig farm. They ignored her. She didn't exist. My grandfather saw this, he gets up, he walks out, he waits on her, he treats her like she should be treated, like everybody should be treated. And before she walked out of his store, she bought 15 suits for every member of her family and paid cash. And when he walked back by me, he said, Jimmy, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, red, it doesn't matter what language you speak, what matters is, is that God made us all the same way and we all bleed red. Don't treat anybody other than the way you want to be treated at all times. That was my grandparents. Several years later, as I got out of high school, the lady in the overalls and the pig farm, well, they found natural gas under her ranch. And she's worth $800 million today. And those men drinking coffee at the back of the store who were sitting in judgment, nowhere to be found. Don't judge people because you have and they have not. And don't judge people because you have not and they have. If we all work together, we can all get there. One plus one doesn't always equal two. It equals something bigger. These lessons from my grandparents added up over time. Eventually, we won a state championship in football. I take those college entry exams that everybody loves to take. My scores came back. My counselor stops me in the hallway. He's got my scores in his hand. He goes, Jimmy, what are you going to do with your life? 
Has anybody in this room ever been 18? You know a lot, don't you? I looked up at my, my counselor. I said, I'm going to be a baseball player. Everybody knows that. And he goes, I hope so. You're too stupid to go to college. <laughs> Dude, you're here to help me. Last I heard from him, he no longer worked with kids. He's no longer a counselor. He worked in a movie rental store. And he's renting the movie about my life to other people. Dream killers come in all shapes and forms. The people who want to tear you down. They come in all shapes and forms, and these are the people who want to see you fail. They've either tried to do something in their lives and they failed at it, or they're too afraid to try. These are the people you need to push away from your inner core, your team, or whatever it is you serve. They don't deserve to be on it. It's the dream makers, people like my grandparents, people like that baseball team in Big Lake, Texas, which, for your own information, there is no lake in Big Lake, Texas. <laughs> 